So before we describe exactly what the principle of equivalence is, let's recall what our definition of mass is in terms of inertia. So mass is basically a measure of inertia found in an object that is able to resist change in motion and it's given by our second law of motion. So whenever we have a net force acting on an object with some mass m, that object will begin to accelerate. Its motion will begin to change. Now for any given net force, the higher the mass is, the lower our acceleration is. So the higher the mass, the more inertia found in our object and the more likely our object will resist change and therefore the lower our acceleration of the object is. So this definition of mass is known as inertial mass. Now a second way of defining mass is using gravitation and this definition is known as gravitational mass. So mass is the quantity that determines the gravitational force between any two objects. So it's given by the law of universal gravitation as shown here. So the magnitude of force, the quantity of force is equal to the gravitational constant G multiplied by the mass of object 1 multiplied by the mass of object 2 divided by the distance, the square of the distance between their center of mass. So once again, this is known as our gravitational mass and this is known as our inertial mass definition. Now, what the principle states is the following. The principle of equivalence states that inertial mass is equal to gravitational mass. In other words, there is no way that we can actually distinguish between these two definitions and these two definitions are exactly identical. So we can say this in another way. There is no experiment that one can conduct to determine whether an object accelerates because of a gravitational force acting on it or because the reference, uh, the reference frame in which the object is in is accelerating. So in other words, let's suppose we take the following object and we let go of the object. So why exactly does our object travel downward? Well, one way to describe the movement is to say that the mass falls because gravity pulls down on our mass. So this is definition number two, our gravitational mass definition. Now, another way to describe this movement is to say the following. Well, what actually takes place is the following. Our mass does not actually move. But when we let go of the mass, our reference frame begins to change its motion. It accelerates upward. And as it accelerates upward, it seems as if the marker is actually moving downward when really it's staying in one place. So what the principle of equivalence states is that, is that there is no experiment that we can conduct to differentiate between the two cases. Case one in which our earth accelerates and case two in which our object accelerates. So let's, let's look at another thought experiment. Let's suppose we take an elevator and we bring an elevator somewhere far into space where gravity does not exist or gravity is negligible. So let's suppose we make a small little incision in the elevator and a light beam goes into the stationary elevator. So the elevator is not accelerating, it's staying in one place. Well, if the light beam goes in one side, it will go directly to the other side. So it will travel in a straight path. Now let's suppose we have a second case. Let's now suppose I make the same incision, but now my elevator is accelerating downward. So notice what happens to the light beam now. Now the light beam no longer travels in a straight path. In fact, it will curve because our reference frame is accelerating downward. So the light curves in the second place when the reference frame, the elevator, begins to accelerate downward. 
So, according to the equivalence principle, an accelerating reference frame is exactly identical to the gravitational pull on the object because earlier we said these two definitions are exactly the same. There is no experiment that we can conduct to differentiate between these two cases, whether our object actually accelerates because of gravity or our object accelerates because our reference frame, the ground, the earth moves upward. And that means the following implication. Therefore, gravity will exert a force on light that will bend the light. And this is exactly what Einstein said using his theory of relativity. So what he showed that if a light beam passes by a very massive object like the sun, the light beam will actually deflect. So if the object wasn't here, the light would travel in the following linear pathway. But when there's a very large object that has a very large gravitational force, the light beam will actually deflect at some angle. 